James 5. Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth, and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth, and been wanton. Ye have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. Ye have condemned and killed the just, and he doth not resist you. Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm going to be doing a video update today. I usually don't do video updates personally, but I'm going to do one today because we have some important things to talk about. Um, for those of you who don't know me, again, my name is Jimmy Miller. I'm the founder of Global Mission for Children. We are a volunteer uh, ministry. We have never and will never take a dime from any donations we get. We don't get many donations. Why? Because we preach the truth of Christ. We don't waver from this book. All the other, you know, they have all denominations out there, Catholic and Calvinist, United Methodist and Baptist and once saved, always saved people. They're all heading to hell, all 30-something thousand denominations in the world. Amen? There is only one truth. We can't add or take away from the book. Revelation 22, 18 says, if you add to this book, you're going to be cursed. Whatever curse that's in here, Revelation 22, 19 says, if you take away from this book, not only um, uh, are you cursed, but you're going to be erased from the book of life your name will be taken out the candlestick will be removed revelation 22 18 and 19 we preach the truth of christ it's a hard word it's a why did all the apostles get slaughtered of course but one and the one that didn't get slaughtered got boiled in oil the apostle john and they tried to kill him why? Because they were hugging everybody. Oh, you're going to be a better person. You're going to get more like Jesus, even though you're still a drunk. You're less of a drunk, you know, than when you gave your life to Christ and said that sinner's prayer. No, you're a drunk. You're going to hell. You cheat. You're going to hell. You're an adulterer. You're a fornicator having sex outside of marriage. You're going to hell. In fact, the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5.22, just the appearance of evil, just the appearance of evil. It says abstain from. That's a command. If you even appear to be evil, Jesus was not a friend of sinners. He didn't hang out with sinners. He called sinners to repentance. He called people to set them free, set the captives free. Amen. He called people from sin, out of sin, not to come save them in their sin. Praise the Lord. We know, and I'll stop with scripture here, but John 3.36 says, He that believeth in the Son has life, but he that does not obey the Son does not have life and the wrath of God abides on them. So we will not uh, bow down to anybody to get donations if they're in false theology. We're going to let them know out of love. We don't care if we lose every dime in donations. Praise the Lord. So I pray that you can join us with a clean heart and that you're walking Matthew 5:48. Be ye perfect as my Father in heaven is perfect. This is the only revelation you need right here in the Bible. Praise the Lord. So we have a very special request. Of course, you know, we have uh, four main mission fields. One is in the Kibera slum of Kenya. And in the Kibera slum, we just found out a few days ago that the government literally ripped through there with bulldozers and backhoe loaders and all this stuff. And they made 30,000 people lose their little homes. Now their homes are usually 10 by 10 or 12 by 12 huts, usually sleep six, eight, 10, 12 in these little rooms. They're they're, they're um, mud floors. There's feces all outside. They just, I mean, there's trash everywhere. It's just, it's one of the poorest places on earth. You can look it up. K-I-B-E-R-A, slum, S-L-U-M, and uh, Nairobi, Kenya. Amen? And you can see uh, the, the just crazy conditions that they live in. Most of you watching this now have no idea. You have a roof over your head. It doesn't leak. You have a water faucet you can turn on. You're a little warm. You turn the air conditioner down. You're a little cold. Who pour you? You put the air, I mean, the heat up. You don't understand. You don't understand what the Bible tells you to do. If you shut up your bowels of compassion from them, 
You're not of God. Amen. James 1.27 says, um, pure and perfect religion, pure and undefiled religion in front of God and the Father is this, to visit the orphan and the widow in their time of distress and to keep yourself unspotted from the world. Praise the Lord. So that's what we strive to do. So our first mission is the Great Commission. Amen? And I'm not going to make this video too much longer. Our first mission is the Great Commission. It's not to feed people. It's not to clothe them. The first thing we do is we make sure that every word that proceeds out of our indigenous missionary's mouth has the word of God on it. Amen? Now, of course, not every single one. They have to say hello and goodbye, and they have to uh, interact with them in between. But everything we do, whether we eat, drink, and anything else, we do it all for the glory of God. Amen? We have too many part-time Christians. And this is going to condemn so many souls and has to hell. They think they can be part-time uh, uh, Christians, like just going to church on Sunday and maybe Wednesday. I used to think, I used to be in this heresy. I used to think the church was on Sunday, right, for one and a half hours or whatever. And then uh, uh, on Wednesday night, I used to start going on Wednesday night and I thought I was a super spiritual Christian. Can you believe that? No, 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 no. The Bible says in Revelation 3.16, I would rather you be hot or cold, but because you are lukewarm, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. That's what God says. That's what Jesus says. And so many out there are lukewarm. So the Bible says when you're a Christian, you're hated by all for my namesake. So when our missionary, I mean, in our mission, and our missionaries, the indigenous missionaries, they're on a very narrow path as we are, as the Bible commands us to be. Amen? And um, we don't get a lot of donations. I am asking you to please see if you can help us this month um, for this special need. And it's in the Kybera slum where the bulldozers came through. They only got a two-week notice. And many of them didn't think the government was going to follow through. And literally, they came through and just crushed 30,000 people's homes. 30,000. Now, not all 30,000 are homeless now. They have moved some of them into other shacks and stuff. Um, but these people live in these little mud huts or little steel huts. Uh, they leak. They're cold. They don't have any electricity. They have no running water. Most people that are watching me today have no clue on what these people really go through. And the Bible commands, again, over 2,000 verses in the Bible, commands you how to use the resources that Jesus gave us to help others. And so many of you, quote, American Christians that are living the American dream, that think you're going to go right into the front door of heaven, are going to end up in the worst parts of hell because you honored him with your lips, but your heart was far from him. And I encourage you to read James 5, 1 through 6, because a lot of you are going to fall under that. I also encourage you to read Matthew, uh, verse, uh, Matthew chapter 25, verse 33 through 46. You should read the whole chapter of Matthew 25. Amen? The wise and foolish virgins and um, uh, a couple other great truths there. But read verses 33 through 46. And what you have done to the least of these, you have done to Jesus. But if you don't do it unto them, and you're living your best life now, and you think you can have one foot in the world and one foot in the kingdom, you're only fooling yourself. And I care enough about you to tell you the truth. Praise the Lord. James 4, 4 says, if you're friends of the world, you're an enemy of God. Amen. And John 15, 14, I'll end with. It says, you, Jesus speaking. It, of course, every word in here is authored by Jesus. Amen. The Holy Spirit inspired God himself. The Father, Son, Holy Spirit is one God. Amen. Three persons, one God. He inspired every word in this book. Don't let anybody tell you different. Amen. But John 15, 14 says, you are my friends. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Praise the Lord. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command. But what does he command me? Go read the Bible and you'll find out exactly what he commands. Amen. So if you can, we're looking to um, raise a little extra money this month to help these precious souls in the Kybera slum uh, to get relocated. Amen and to find shelter because the government completely wiped them out, literally bulldozed over their huts. 
and uh, has made uh, a couple thousand of them homeless. And a few of those are brethren in our fellowship. Of course, our brethren are taking care of them now, but you can imagine fitting more people in a 10 by 10 or a 12 by 12 hut is very tough when they have their own children and family there. Amen. But we're here for each other. Praise the Lord. We will not compromise. The Bible says in Amos 3.3, 3, how can two walk together lest they be agreed? Amen. And um, you must be agreed with Jesus to be a saint of God, to be in the kingdom of God. And uh, lastly, uh, one thing that's really missing in Christendom too, and I see this all the time, there are a lot of lone rangers out there that don't want to have any headship. They think, oh, Holy Spirit's my teacher. I get revelation. Listen, the Bible clearly states, and I have a teaching on that. It'll be posted down below. The Bible clearly states that there are bishops, there are pastors on this earth now those words are used so wrongly in so many instances that does not discount what Jesus Christ said that there will be people that are um, anointed that are gifted to be teachers on this earth the Bible even says be not many masters be not many teachers because there's a greater condemnation uh, on judgment day for the teachers that are wrong, 2 Peter chapter 2 goes through false teachers. Jude, the book of Jude, make merchandise out of you, etc. So 99% of the teachers out there that proclaim Christ in the pulpits of the world today are false and going to hell. And sadly, everybody in the pews are just about every single one of them are going to hell. And I care about you. But that doesn't mean we forsake fellowship. Hebrews is very clear of that. We should never forsake fellowship. It's commanded in the Bible. Sure, there's a season maybe when you come out of a false church, but you should be looking. And there shouldn't be a long, 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 long period of time where you don't. So all these things are important to our mission. A lot of people don't like to hear these things, but that's okay. Praise the Lord. So if you can help us, join us. I'll put a video attached to the end of this that will show the bulldozing a little bit uh, and the destruction that has happened. And um, we love all our supporters. And now listen, if you're a supporter and you're not walking holy with God, you're going to hell. Amen? Um, we'll certainly use your money as Jesus has um, blessed us to do so. But we care about your soul more than your money. Amen? And that's why we, after six years now, six years and a handful of months we've been around, uh, we only have dozens of smaller, typically smaller uh, donors. We have a couple larger ones too, praise the Lord. But it doesn't matter if you're a small donor or a large donor. We're going to tell you the truth. We're going to love you like Jesus loved you. We're going to love our neighbor as we want to be loved ourselves. God forbid if I uh, appear to be in sin to somebody, I want my neighbor, I want my fellow Christian to come to me and say, Jim, hey, listen, I saw you do X or I saw you write this or I saw you blah, blah, blah. And I believe that's sin. Come, let, let us reason together. Let's go through the Bible verses. And if I'm in sin, God forbid, I've got to repent from it. I've got to go to God and see what's you know going on, etc. And there has to be a season of sorrow. 2 Corinthians 7.10 says, For godly sorrow works repentance then unto salvation. See how all these wicked Calvinists and others say, God saves you. You don't have to do anything except turn to him and just acknowledge it. No. For godly sorrow, first of all, you acknowledge to God that I've done wrong. I've crossed you, Lord. Works repentance. And that's, you, that's the process. The next verse, uh, 2 Corinthians 7, 11, explains it with zeal. Amen. What revenge, what clearing of yourselves. You can read it. And it shows you what real repentance is. It's not just words. I hear people say, I repent every day. No, 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 no. We can't do that. So as you can see, I only wanted to make this five minutes. So we're almost at 13 minutes now. So I could go on for hour after hour after hour and put out a bunch of Bible verses to you. I don't apologize for making it longer. Praise the Lord. Uh, the Bible is the word of God and I love to speak it. But I guess I better go for now because I just want this to be as short as feasibly possible um, just to give you a quick update. So I will put the video of the Kybera slum um, on to uh, the end of this video. And to finish off 2 Corinthians uh, 7.10, for godly sorrow works repentance unto salvation. But the, but the sorrow of the world, which most people have, their hand got caught in the cookie jar. And that's why they're repenting. They want to save face. No, 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 no. You've got to go to God and have godly sorrow. 
There's a season of sorrow that leads to repentance. Praise the Lord. You can't sin or repent, sin or repent. And this is the stuff we teach on our mission fields. So we're not just passing out uh, cookies and crackers and water. Amen. We're preaching uh, living water and the bread of life so they'll never thirst again. Praise the Lord. And of course, we do also help with their physical needs. Again, thank you for watching. God bless the obedient. Praise the Lord. He is worthy. And for those that aren't walking holy, that are part-time Christians, that are lukewarm Christians, which God will spew out of his mouth, we pray for you too. There's plenty of resources below. Um, please look at them. Reach out to us if you need to. We're here basically 24-7. We have elders that can help out too. Um, other elders, amen. And that we're here for the repentant and those seeking God. To Jesus be all the glory. Amen.